Aloha and welcome to another episode of Talking Tax on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. So I'm Jonathan Helton. I'm a policy researcher at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and I'm standing in today for Mark Coleman. So joining me, as always, is the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika. Tom, how are you doing today? Uh, great. A little bit uh, waterlogged because of all the rain that's been happening, but I'm okay. Good to hear it. So today we're going to discuss the Lahaina Recovery Fund that Governor Josh Green announced earlier in November. So let's jump right into it. Um, what do we know right now about what the fund is going to do? In well, in a, I think it's kind of one of the more innovative items that's uh, that's been announced by the governor's office with regards to the disaster relief measures. Uh, it's supposed to be, at least according to the governor's uh, press releases, uh, the concept is supposed to be similar to the 9/11 fund created in the aftermath of the destruction of the World Trade Center. Uh, the idea is that uh, the uh, people who have been uh, accused of liability in regards to the uh, the wildfire incident uh, pay money into the fund. Um, claimants who want a distribution from the fund would agree not to sue the fund contributors. So um, the primary advantage of doing that would be that you'd get money in your, if you're a claimant, you would get money in your pocket within months rather than years. Uh, the others, you know, have filed uh, lawsuits, and lawsuits take time to resolve, maybe, you know, a couple of years at minimum. Uh, but there are still people who uh, don't think it's a great idea. Uh, typical of the opposition was this post on X. So in other words, what our state government deems is the value of your loss is all you will receive because you sign your rights away to sue for more. Don't do it, Lahaina. That's that's what the post said. So, um, so Jonathan, what what do you think of this? And uh, have you had experience with uh, claimants talking about this? I think on our side, we're we're going to be very interested in the details of the fund, which I think are still being worked out. Um, just to give some background to viewers, we know that the state has pledged $150 million toward the fund. We know that um, Hawaiian Electric has um, pledged up to $75 million. And we're expecting Kamehameha Schools and Maui County to put money in as well. So it's going to be a lot of money there. I think our, our major questions are, where's the money going to come from? Who's going to be eligible? Um, overall, I do think that something like this is probably going to be good for the state and the county and the utility. Um, probably will save, probably will, um, and it'll just save everyone a lot of time and headaches um, because the more people who decide to participate in the fund, um, the fewer lawsuits that um, taxpayers are going to have to pay for and the fewer lawsuits that people are going to have to wait on in order to get money to uh, maybe start rebuilding their lives. Yeah, let's not forget the attorneys that got to be paid, right? I mean, of course. Um, <clears throat> uh, attorneys uh, who uh, do contingency fees in this kind of situation may take maybe up to a third of the recovery. Okay, that's that's not atypical. Um, so there's like more mouths that have to be fed, uh, obviously. And um, uh, and then people can go, get on with their lives instead of you know going through, you know the the necessary stages to get to where a trial can be had. Uh, namely, in, in civil litigation, you've got uh, discovery, depositions, uh, and let's not forget the possible appeals if uh, if the uh, the verdict doesn't go. Uh, and and satisfy both sides because either side has the right to appeal. Yes, and that's that's something we've seen regarding attorneys' fees in the the Camp Fire, the Camp Paradise Fire in California back in 2018. People, um, are, you know, who filed lawsuits against the utility or who even 
and who, who were part of the settlement that the utility ended up giving out, they're having to shell out tens of thousands of dollars to their attorneys. And, you know, that's good for the attorneys, of course, but it's not so good for the fire victims who get a lot less money as a result. So I do want to ask, though, do we know whether or not the fund is going to be targeted only at people who lost loved ones or who were injured themselves? Or is this going to be something broader that is also focused at people who lost their houses or lost their businesses in Lahaina? Uh, from what I gathered from the press releases, it's for you know people who sustained like property losses as well, uh, not just uh, loss of life or loss of a loved one. And the, um, you know, what the governor was saying was that the payout per claimant is going to be in excess of a billion dollars. So it's it's not like, uh, you know, the, these kinds of class action settlements where you go in and, you know, you get lucky to get a $20 gift certificate for, for McDonald's or something. Um, it, this is much more substantial. And, uh, you know, if, if there is a... Um, you know, place where the payout would be unfair uh, to the to the claimants. I, I kind of think that that number's been passed. If the um, uh, if the statistics that have been you know true so far have been you know are, are maintained. So I mean, if there's like you know n no um, major claimant pulling out, for example. Yes. So right now we're looking at probably close, we're looking at upwards of 200 million that's already been pledged toward the fund. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't have any idea right now what my, Maui County or Kamehameha schools are looking to put in. But it, I think that for the people who did lose a loved one, I think that the governor's pledge that, you know, your people are probably going to get over a million dollars. That, that se certainly seems um, within the realm of possibility. Um, but I, I do want to ask. I do want to ask a question. I know in your article, you'd written about how the Star Advertiser kind of had a big question poll, and it showed you know twi about twice as many people supported this idea as opposed it. So, in addition to what you read, you know the the post from Twitter or X, wh where's the opposition coming from? Is that is that typical? Do people have other concerns that they'd expressed? Well, um, as as of right now, the big question poll that you mentioned, I, I just kind of pulled it up uh, uh, on the advertiser site. Uh, there was uh, 245 votes in favor. Um, it's, they, they say, yes, it enables quicker legal compensation for victims. Uh, there's 104 saying, no, doubtful, it's a positive. And 80 people saying, undecided, need to hear more, which is probably kind of the camp you were in. Um, but I think, uh, what that poll represents, and it's not very many, you know, votes overall. I mean, it's in, in, a in a state with a, like a million people in it, uh, you know, this is less than 500 votes. Uh, but, but I think what it does, um, show us is there's some distrust of government, uh, which perhaps is healthy. Uh, and, uh, it really does show us that the, uh, the um, claimants do need, um, you know, some circumspection in evaluating the terms of the settlement before they sign their claims away. Uh, and I, I, I certainly understand that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, my feeling is that, uh, you know, they're the adults in the room. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're not babies. They can, they can decide whether they want to sign their, you know, their, their claims away or not. Uh, they have, you know, a choice whether they want to uh, engage uh, legal counsel, and 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 maybe and maybe they do engage legal counsel anyway, just to kind of give them, um, you know, advice on you know the, the different aspects of what they're agreeing to. Uh, but you know, a, a third of the recovery, I'm not really sure about. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not really sure uh, that a claimant is better off going through that route, uh, especially when, when we have a recovery uh, amount that's north of a billion dollars for 
Yes, I, I right? would imagine that it, in, it, in, unless <clears throat> someone has um, the resources to fight this out in court over, you know, however many years this takes, um, it's going to make a lot more sense to take the settlement because I, for a lot of the people who lost who lost um, loved ones or their livelihoods in Lahaina, they're probably not going to be able to um, af afford to both stay in Maui and fight numerous lawsuits at the same time. So I, you know, I do think I do think you're right. I do think people, a lot of people, are probably going to be the adults, and they're going to say this is better for me and my family. But but of course, you know, um, we'll we'll see what the terms and conditions are and how much money gets put into the fund. That's that, that's right, and 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 I think you know it is important to you know to to give people the freedom to make these kinds of choices as opposed to saying well no i mean you're not competent to make the choice we're to make the choice for you or something like that um yes. which is which is i think what some people uh, are seeing that uh, you know that the amount in the lahaina recovery fund is categorically not enough so 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 people should really you know say ooh you know get out get out of my sight right do we have any idea whether or not this is something that needs to go through the legislature and where the governor plans to get the state um, funding for this? Uh, I think there is uh, uh, parts that will have to be enacted into law, yes. Yes. yes I think the legislature will have to buy in. Yes, that, 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 that was going to say, that was my understanding. I know that... Um, this month as well, Governor Green had moved a, something over $170 million out of various departments. I think he was mostly um, deleting capital improvements to move that toward Lahaina relief. But I don't know how much of that has been um, earmarked, so to speak, for this fund and how much is going toward other efforts. So it, it is very possible that the legislature would have to appropriate more money during the next session for this fund. Okay, and and there, of course, lies the danger. Um, not not necessarily for this fund, but 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 overall, uh, yes, you have seen the governor move money uh, from various other places to Lahaina relief, or or to uh, wildfire relief in general, uh, and the. Uh, Constituent the, the the projects and and uh, you know line items that money came from are going to have constituencies, and they are going to be want to be made whole. Um, and then you have to kind of contend with the overall truth uh, that you know government doesn't pay taxes, taxpayers pay taxes. So uh, if you want all this extra money, where is it going to come from? Right. Uh, and the answer is you and me. Uh, and and every, everybody else similarly situated. So, is this kind of uh, you know something that we want to see? Do we want you know as as society to be in a position to to uh, make everybody pay more for uh, Lahaina relief? Uh, are, are we content to let the you know, the people who are gen generating, uh, or I'm sorry, do anything generously to continue to donate generously? Or is it something that we're going to have to um, get whacked for in the end? Yes. And I think you wrote about this. Um, it's It's been several weeks now, but when you originally discussed the idea of creating some sort of settlement fund, you mentioned, and I completely agree, Either way, um, the state of Hawaii taxpayers are going to probably be paying more, whether or not you create this fund or if it's all litigated in court. That money doesn't come from nowhere. That's money that the state government and the county government have to pay um, for the lawsuits. So, and you know, th that's that's on top of the fact that um, rates for HECO and for electricity may, may very well go up. So at the end of the day, taxpayer and the consumers, they're, they're going to be paying 
um, kind of no matter how you cut it. So yeah, no, that's that's an excellent point. Um, under the uh, uh, Public Utilities Commission statutes that are you know, that that govern HECO, uh, when you have a a very large disaster like we had in Lahaina, uh, they don't have to confine the hit just to Maui ratepayers. They can go statewide. And, and I believe they are going to do that, and I think they've already indicated that they will. So, yes, we're going to be taking a statewide hit anyway. Um, hopefully, you know, if they just use insurance money, uh, it won't be that bad, because that's presumably been already paid for. But uh, you know, then that that kind of leaves the question of okay, well, uh, you got the other, you got the other lawsuits, you got the other. Uh, things that uh, HECO has to do to kind of uh, shore up their uh, infrastructure on Maui and other and other places where there's wildfire risk. Uh, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be money, and that's going that money is gonna have to come out of somewhere, and it's gonna come out of electric bills. I want to say there was a Civil Beat article that discussed um, ECO's insurance, and it looked like that up to 75 million they were going to put toward this fund uh, was about half of one of their insurance policies. I don't I don't remember if the article discussed whether or not they had others, but so so part of this will probably be funded by insurance, um, which which is good for uh, ratepayers, but it's it's very likely that that won't be it. And I do want to ask because I know you and I discussed this offline about the about whether or not this fund is likely to be taxable. If, so if I am a resident and I agree not to sue the state in exchange for a million dollars, will I have to pay state income tax on that? Well, again, that it it depends on what uh, the uh, the money replaces. If it's for like personal injury or uh, sickness. Uh, then, then there's no there's no there's no tax. If it replaces property, for example, you know the, there's a uh, the house that's burned down to the ground, and you buy and you got to buy a new house. Um, the uh, the amount uh, goes into the basis of the new house, so you, so you don't get taxed, but at the same time. You're not completely exempt from tax if you if you kind of sell the property and run, right? And I think that was an issue that they've dealt with in California, going back again, where the utility created a settlement fund, and people, people. My my impression is there was not the same level of loss of life in the 2018 fires, but it was. Um, <coughs> A lot of properties were destroyed, and the settlement fund, um, people have gotten their settlements, but they're finding out that, oh, wait, I have a tax bill, whether or not that's federal or state. And I know this, this state of California made action to ensure that that, fu that fund was exempt from the state income tax. And what I think will be interesting, and this may affect Hawaii, there uh, is a an attempt by several California lawmakers at the federal level to um, exempt all of the um, to exempt the settlement funds from the federal income tax and there's all sorts of legal complexities there in addition to the complexities at the state level but if whether or not that bill is going to move forward could have an effect on Hawaii and whether or not um, this this settlement fund is going to be subject to the federal income tax I don't know if you have any Thoughts you want to add there on the federal side of things? Well, no, I mean that it it uh, uh, if the uh, dollars that come out of the fund are considered to be replacing income, uh, then the normal rule is you know those dollars are taxable. Uh, I mean, typically in a in a casualty situation like uh, you know like wildfire loss, you don't have any of that. Uh, but the issue has come up in in instances where you know businesses are claiming 
that they've lost income as a result of, you know, being shut down. And then the issue might come up there for, but, but for normal individuals uh, with homes or uh, who've lost family members or who've gotten injured, uh, that usually is not a problem. My impression is that for um, damages that are awarded for something like emotional distress, uh, that would also be um, counted in someone's tax bill. Is that is that correct, at least for Hawaii state law? Well, well it's federal law, and uh, those those types of d uh, damages are are normally exempt uh, okay. from in from income tax. Uh, it's it's where you get punitive damages that those are normally taxable. But I don't okay, think anybody's I, talking. I but I don't think anybody's talking about punitive damages. Right. At, le at least as part of the settlement. Yes. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't expect there to be you know any kind of punitive damages component of a settlement. And so, just to extend this discussion on um, taxation a little bit further, how do how do attorneys' fees factor in? Does does someone who ends up paying an attorney thirty percent of their settlement? Do they have would 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 the amount that they paid their attorney be calculated um, for any sort of tax liability, whether or not it comes, whether or not it's for um, replacing the home or, or something else? Uh, no, I think that would be it would be netted out somehow. Okay, so so what, I, what I'm hearing is overall good news. This settlement fund in in most instances probably won't be taxed, although I. I know that will depend on the individual circumstance. So it's 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 not something that we can say as a blanket statement, but it, you know, it's it's better than paying, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11% of this settlement fund to the state or federal government. Right, and that's better than paying 33% of it to attorneys. Yes. Um yeah, I mean, I'm 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 an attorney myself, so I I can I can kind of say that, um, you know, perhaps some of my colleagues wouldn't want me to say stuff like this, but that's kind of how I feel. Right. So I I don't know if you have anything else in particular you want to add to this discussion. I think that we're going to be looking for details on this, and I hope that they're going to be, um, I hope that they'll come out relatively soon, at least before the legislative session, because Governor Green has now announced the um, the plan to incentivize short-term rental owners. And maybe that's the the topic of one of your upcoming columns, but that's going that has to factor into the state revenue discussion as well. Well yeah, of course. Um, if uh, uh, I mean I, I think there are components of the Lahaina Recovery Fund and other, of course, other uh, aspects of the um, disaster relief that are going to have to be acted on by the legislature. Certainly, they've got you know the, the overall power of the purse, so um, they can you know change appropriations as they see fit. Uh, hopefully, that there's some good discussion you know between the governor and legislative leaders as to how that's going to shape out. Um, but but I but I think uh, there is going to be, you know, some overall relief and and uh, I think it'd be you know foolish for legislature for legislators to to completely uh, poo poo that in an election year. Yes. Uh, certainly, you know, voters are going to be looking to them uh, for you know appropriate leadership and uh, an appropriate response by the state on this, including. Yes including possible revenue enhancers. And uh, when, when those come up, we'll be reporting on those, definitely. I, I don't expect, I know the governor had discussed adding or reintroducing his tax reduction plan with the state revenues. I don't know that that will be possible in 2024. But of course, if there's any discussion of higher taxes at the state level, Grasser Institute Tax Foundation will be be sure to let everyone know. So I, I guess to, just to wrap up on my end, uh, I think that we'll be very interested in what the details are. I know the governor announced that he wants to have this fund ready to go and paying out money by um, middle of next year. 
So we should be seeing details hopefully within the next couple of months. And it's going to be up to everyone who was affected by this fire to make a decision on whether or not this is best for them. Um, so I'll leave my thoughts there. Tom, I don't know if you have anything you want to do to conclude. Yeah, no, I, and just uh, kind of to uh, follow up on that just a little bit, uh, there will be obviously a discussion in the upcoming legislature, uh, which starts in January, uh, about what these recovery efforts are and how they work. Uh, these discussions will be at least to some extent open to the public. So uh, this is a kind of a way for the public to uh, A, keep uh, tabs on what's going on and B, if they want to try to shape the discussion by uh, by influencing or discussing this with their with their legislators. So if you are a concerned citizen, you will have the opportunity to weigh in. And I'm sure that the people who are going to be affected by this will want to weigh in as well. If they, maybe maybe people have a concern that's not been addressed and that can be added to or subtracted from whatever bill they have to discuss. So it's, uh, with the other complications of how our government works, it's reassuring that people's voices can still be heard on uh, matters like this. So with that, I, Tom Yamachika, I really appreciate you participating in this discussion. Um, I will be back next week in the next couple of weeks with another episode of Talking Tax. So aloha to everyone.